All right. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's great to see everyone in the attendee list and let us know where you hail from and what problems you're trying to solve with GitOps in the chat. We'll be using the chat function for most of our communication today. Uh, hopefully you are here today to hear from Lee Kapili, uh, staff developer advocate at VMware, who will be walking you through securing DevOps debug access with Flux, Pinniped, Dex, and GitHub. Hey, Lee, thanks for joining us. If you are brand new to our various WeWorks or GitOps talks or series, welcome. And if you've been coming to these sessions for a while, uh, welcome back. A little bit of background, if this is your first time coming to one of these, uh, we've been running for, you know, a couple of years now, and uh, I work for a company called WeWorks. If you haven't heard of us, we're a startup with uh, employees uh, all across the globe. We are globally distributed and remote teams all over the place. Uh, so a lot of what we do is based on open source. Uh, you may have heard of our projects Flux and Flagger, which are in CNCF as incubating projects. And we are super excited that we got our um, the Flux application for graduation in last week. So fingers crossed that will happen sometime this year. And um, Flux was uh, also the project that really kicked off the term that our CEO Alexa, Alexis Richardson coined uh, called GitOps. And it's really been cool to watch it spread like wildfire and see the community grow over these last few years. Uh, so much so that large organizations like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, uh, I think VMware, as Lee's talking about today, uh, is also involved. Um, and you know they've all these different vendors and companies have uh, adopted Flux and are using it under the hood to offer GitOps to their customers. Uh, if you missed our GitOps One Stop Shop event back in October of last year, uh, you can find that playlist on YouTube. And we're actually I'm going to give you a little reveal here. We're planning out our GitOps days uh, for 2022, so tune in for that later this year as well. Uh, so. Oh, this page has a few of our projects. Cortex uh, is another one of our projects that we donated to the CNCF uh, that helps make Prometheus scalable. Um, and then Weave Ignite, EKS Cuddle, and now Weave GitOps, which is also a free and open source um, tool that's kind of built on top of Flux that's like a UI for, for Flux. We have many more. So if you want to check out more information uh, about us, uh, please visit our GitHub or the CNCF GitHub. Uh, and you can learn more about us at our website, uh, weave.works. So a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we've bookmarked an hour for today's session, and I'm sure I don't have to explain too much about Zoom these days, but the one thing that I will mention here is that unless you have something super private um, to share in the chat, be sure to change the two to everyone so that everyone in the audience can see your question or comment. Sometimes our audience members answer each other's questions or just comment and add some, some chatter there. So uh, don't be afraid to make sure that everyone can see your, your questions or your, your comments there. Um, and just a quick note that I'll keep track of the questions in the chat. And uh, when Lee has good pauses, I'll make sure to pose those questions to him or we can just save them until the end, whatever works best. So we'll try and make this as interactive as possible. So please throw your questions in the chat and, um, and we'll get to them. So uh, a bit on how to get connected to us and the Flux community here, visit the website fluxcd.io to learn more. And if you make your way over to GitHub, please give us a star there and check out the discussions and uh, Q&A there as well. Uh, the Flux team, of course, is on the CNCF Slack under the Flux channel. And if you need to get an invite, I will drop all of these links uh, into the chat in just a bit. So we have a ton of talks booked for this spring session. These are just some of the ones coming up in March. So if you haven't already, please go to our meetup.com slash weave user group uh, and you can see all of our, what we've got planned for the rest of the year. So with that, I am done. And Lee, uh, I will hand things over to you. You can unmute yourself and turn your camera on. I'll give you screen sharing. I think you should be able to share your screen now. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks awesome. so much for having me. I'm super excited for today. Uh, also, just like really looking forward to getting into a, a very deep and fresh and uh, pretty intermediate level demo 
Um, I have zero slides because we have zero time uh, to get through this level of complexity. So I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna try to break it down. Uh, let's take some time. If you got questions for me, you know, um, definitely gonna be really glad to to delve into things. And let's talk a little bit about how we can build better authentication interfaces and better security habits with our teams uh, using Pinniped with our Git platform. So uh, I'll do my best to get into this demo now. Yeah. Here we go. So uh, I'm prepping up a Flux Bootstrap here and you can see this massive control repo that I've started uh, putting together. And I gotta do a couple of things in GitHub in order to get prepared for the sorts of off tricks that we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna go to this organization that I made uh, that also has a GitHub team already in it that I'm a member of, right? So it's the Stealthy Tail organization. Uh, there are zero repositories. This is an indication that I have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, luckily we're in the, in the company of friends here, right? And uh, I'm gonna come over to my repository that I'm preparing. And you can see I was just checking some of the docs here. And I want to push this up and we are going to think there's a special flag for this. I'll just make this a public repo. And I want to put it in a particular org name over here. So we'll do that. So I just, I really got to move this screen sharing thing out of the way. Here we go. So we will do uh, hub create. I'll increase the font size a little bit here. And might as well just use the whole window. A repository called Stealthy Tail from my new GitHub organization that I have some of my ACLs in. And we're just gonna make this repo, right? So, uh, I just did that through the CLI because I want everything to kind of be hooked up already. Um, if you don't use the hub command line tool, you've seen me using it a lot. Uh, and then this is GitHub telling me how to push to it. I already got a repo hooked up here. Uh, so we can start adding some files. All right, we'll go add some things. Um, let's look at our status here. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a Git command line user. And I'm not really proud of this readme yet. So maybe we'll just like, Reset the README. And we're looking at our status. So I got a lot of files that we're adding here. Right? You can see it, it's a little bit easier to look at maybe in the, um, the S code window that I have here. Right? So let's get a little bit of a better look at the file tree. Hopefully uh, that's pretty legible. Um, what's up everybody, everybody uh, join in from like all different places in the world too. Uh, I'm here in Denver, so I, I see lots of people in the US. Uh, if you're not in the US, come say hi. But uh, yeah, I got a Carvel folder because I'm gonna be using some Carvel tooling today to uh, wrangle all of the different variants of software that we wanna deploy. So I'm gonna be doing overlays, very similar tool to like JSONet and um, JK config not as comparable to helm but similar use case uh also similar in a way to customize but a lot more general of a swiss army knife um and with like less restrictions about how you can use it so uh, i'll be using ytt to do that that's part of the carvel tool set we got a clusters folder that i'm preparing here so that i can tell flux where to go find my manifests and then uh i got a github webhook uh, set up here with some bash uh crimes and then we're looking at setting up a management cluster and a workload cluster. So why are we gonna want two clusters? What we're trying to do today is I want to give as the platform engineer at my company, I wanna be able to give everybody who's technical and maybe even some business people access to the Kubernetes API. You're saying, oh, well, Lee, everyone's going to get access to Kubernetes. That sounds a little bit dangerous. Like, isn't the whole point of 
GitOps to create some clear security and audit and collaboration boundaries so that we don't have to be changing things in Kubernetes. And yes, I would say that we really want to preserve that, that authentication boundary. Now, the problem is that Git is not a great interface for learning about the what's happening inside of a live system. And usually when you're talking about doing GitOps, you also are really wanting to you know, implement very mature metrics and alerting systems. You've got Prometheus, you have Grafana, you know, your ops team or your DevOps people, or maybe the dev team is getting paged for alerts that are happening in the cluster. Cause like, you wanna know, like you've set up Flux's notifi notification controller. It's paging you when things are like out of sync. And then what, right? Like you're getting these pages and you wanna go and figure out what's going on. So then you like, what, you talk to your DevOps person and that DevOps person has an admin coop config to the, to the cluster. We could do better than that, right? We could, we could empower people to have a better experience when something goes wrong so that they have the information that they should have access to. Even if they don't know how to talk to Kubernetes yet, it's there, right? Like they have the access to go and see like, hey, is my deployment failing? You know, should I go look at the logs for this set of pods? Should I run this cool command line tool that my DevOps person told me about so that I can figure out if something is wrong? You know, and so that is... Um, kind of the problem statement, right? We're gonna have multiple clusters. We're gonna be deploying all different kinds of workloads. Some of it's infrastructure, some of it's apps, right? Some of it's secret stuff. Some of it is like an application from a different team, but we wanna enable people, whether they're a business person or a tester or a developer, or if you're like the administrator of the cluster, for you to bring your identity to your Kubernetes platform, all of the different clusters that you have everywhere. You bring your identity there, Kubernetes knows who you are, and you authenticate, and then you're authorized by the policies that are defined in Git. And maybe a good way to do that, right? That now that you're talking about bringing your identity to Kubernetes, logging in to Kubernetes so that Kubernetes can tell you what you have access to, right? Using RBAC, defining RBAC in Git. But what if that identity was actually the identity that you use to collaborate with your teammates in Git, right? That you, that you use to authorize and sign your commits, that you use to filter which SSH keys you are allowed to use to commit to servers and also log into machines, right? Like we center a lot of our collaborative habits and our thoughts about identity and policy and permissions and who has access to what, who works with what, on what, in which folders and which, which people on what teams. We encode a lot of that information into our Git platform because the Git platform is the place where we collaborate with each other. And as a consequence, the Git platform has data structures and is built to understand who you are what you want to do, who you want to talk to, and how you can collaborate and what you have access to, right? So we want to tap into that and bridge and it bridge those identities into our Kubernetes platform. Cool. So I feel really comfortable talking about these ideas because I've had all these problems before, but now we're going to get uncomfortable because I have this demo that I have no idea is going to work. So we're going to go and make some stuff break. Um, I got a, I'm pretty sure it's some parts of this are going to work. It's just we're doing a lot of things when we're mixing all of these things together. So um, what we got happening here? I'm going to tell you about a tool called Pinniped. So if, if I go to the interwebs, right, and I go to Pinniped Dev, what does this give us? Uh, it says batteries included for Kubernetes authentication. Uh, and this is an awesome tool set and it's super complicated to set up. So I put a lot of work in to trying to help you uh, have an example of how to set up Pinniped in a, in a way that integrates very tightly and in a very specific way with GitHubs and it, with GitHub and GitHub Teams. Now, um, this batteries included bit is, is awesome and it works for most use cases. Like if you have an OIDC compliant endpoint. But 
unfortunately, GitHub's authentication system, they have support for like OIDC that's like beta inside of GitHub Actions, but they don't have this identity provider that's standard available with their normal login systems. What are we going to do there? Well, the batteries aren't included for that. But Pinniped does play really nicely with another project that you might have heard about before when you're talking about logging into Kubernetes. There is a project called Dex, right? And my dark mode is messing up their website, but Dex allows you to hook up to GitHub's authentication and you can even change your Kubernetes cluster. You can change the API server to talk directly to Dex. And if you have that sort of access to change your API server parameters, you can make Dex an identity provider inside of your cluster and you can start doing RBAC stuff on GitHub roles. It's awesome. But what's not awesome is that you need access to the API server to do that. Because this is a very core thing about authentication that's happening through the API server in Kubernetes, right? The API server decides who you are. It decides if it, if it understands who you are and then it uses that identity to enforce the authorization rules, right? And we don't always have access to do that, right? If we deploy GKE, if we're deploying on EKS, we don't control the Kubernetes API server. We don't control that, those parts of the control plane because we're renting them, right? We're, we're using a service from our cloud provider. And so it's not our job, thankfully not our job to administer Kubernetes and all of the controllers and etcd and then like set up all of the TLS secrets and rotate stuff and all that stuff. I don't wanna be in the business of doing that. That's why I'm using a managed service. But some of us have an EKS cluster and then we also have a bare metal cluster where we have the ability to change things, right? So you telling me that I just wanna use Dex and log into GitHub like on premises, but then when I get into EKS, I have to like use some other thing. Not super fun. But what can we do about this? Well, if we fuse Pinniped and Dex together, Pinniped has some really cool features that allow you to either tie into the PKI mechanisms of Kubernetes, or you can also use Pinniped as an authentication proxy right, exposed via like a load balancer, whether that's on a public or private network. And then Pinniped can step in between all of your requests, your user requests, not like your application and, and CI requests and stuff, if you don't want it to, but your end user requests for debugging, if you wanna say, hey, like I'm Lee, I'm logging into the Kubernetes cluster and I wanna talk to Stacy and she's gonna go log into the Kubernetes cluster with her specific access, that stuff can go through the DEX authentication proxy. And then DEX can manufacture some credentials inside of the cluster real time for you and make sure that your credentials are unique to each cluster that you're logging into so that the security boundaries are, I mean, it's just cool. Like if you're an infrastructure nerd, if you're a security nerd, this is music to your ears right now because this means that it doesn't matter who you're renting your Kubernetes cluster from or if you stood it up on your own, it doesn't matter if you are the administrator on the cluster, as long as you have sort of like some elevated privileges, you can install Pinniped and you can start doling out identities and asserting roles and using RBAC on those identities. And you don't have to be changing any of the underlying infrastructure. You install Pinniped. And then since we want to talk to GitHub, we're going to make Pinniped talk to Dex. So we're, if, you, if you're kind of in the know on like how these identity providers work, we're actually going to have two OIDC providers. We're gonna have Dex turning GitHub into OIDC inside the cluster. And then we're gonna have Pinniped exposing another bridge OIDC endpoint together. Uh, and then we'll have the concierge on all of the individual Kubernetes clusters. So you only need to install like the Pinniped control plane at Dex one time. And then all of your other Kubernetes clusters can talk to this identity provider that created, and it'll dole that out based on the credentials that are being asked for by the CLI plugin. So it's, it's getting a little bit gnarly. I know that the explanation is kind of crazy, um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I know that we've got a question here. 
Uh, Smain K wants to know, I'm curious about the difference of what I've already set up with EKS plus OIDC plus DEX plus an OIDC client. I mean, what does Pinniped just bring to the table on top of that, right? Um, so the difference is that when you set up Pinniped, you don't need to do anything EKS specific uh, in order to set up Pinniped. You can talk directly to the Kubernetes layer and the same sort of Pinniped installation that works on GKE is gonna work on EKS. Uh, so that's kind of the first benefit is that you have this very uniform installation across uh, all of your clusters, right? And you can pick one, as kind of your main control plane, or if you want to have different domains that you can do that with, you know, your test clusters and your production clusters. But then in addition to that, there is another benefit. And that is that the credentials that are handed to an end user when you log in to a cluster with Pinniped, those credentials are not going to be able to leak across the cluster boundaries in between all of your clusters. So if I go and I log into dev with some temporary credentials uh, that are associated with my, my browser GitHub login, if I'm doing that with Pinniped, then that secret token is not cryptographically valid in my production cluster. And that's a really powerful security property that if you look into the Pinniped architecture, uh, it takes some serious work to make that happen. Um, so I'm not saying that, you know, what you've done with EKS um, necessarily has that security boundary concern, uh, but I know that with the Pinniped design, it's something that has explicitly been built to prevent this sort of attack surface from being a problem. Uh, so hopefully that, that's helpful uh, as far as what the value of what Pinniped's bringing to the table is. Um, but ultimately, if you if you are setting up OIDC uh, login with your cluster, then you are already, from what I've seen in the field, much further ahead than a lot of folks. So it's like you can you can rest easy knowing that you've you've done this integration, that you have some end user identity able to log in, and that's part of the benefit of using these mature managed services. Now, if you want to have a very uniform identity, like say you're logging in with GitHub. Um, and you want to implement that across all of your clusters, regardless of which cloud platforms you're using or whether or not you have your own clusters, this pathway gives you a very good method for doing the setup once and then having a very small setup that ports over to the rest of your environment in an environment agnostic way. So uh, I would say that that's where the value is. Cool. Um, so getting into the demo, right? We're going to go and install a bunch of software. And I'm going to be focusing first on this management cluster because we have to set up Pinniped and Dex together. So um, I'm using YTT. And YTT kind of gives me this Helm value type um, abstraction. So you know, if, if you go into this Carvel folder, uh, folder basically, there's this um, library directory. These libraries, um, they're kind of like copies of things from other repositories, right? So here's like a YAML that installs Dex uh, with some default settings. And this YTT library is actually built uh, from a deterministic and hashing um, technique uh, with a tool called Vendor. So the Carvel tool set is made up of different, um, different individual tools. And vendor is spelled V-E-N-D-I-R, kind of clever, is going to help me look at different types of sources around the internet and keep them up to date uh, by bringing them into my own repository. And why that's going to be valuable is I'm basically bringing in the Pinniped supervisor, the Pinniped concierge, and an installation of the DEX um, app with a bunch of defaults into my project so that I can overlay on top of that, right? So this would be similar almost to like using a customized remote base, except that it's not fetching every time, right? I'm fetching with one tool that's designed to go and fetch those things and then lock them based off of what hashes uh, or commits there are. 
And then uh, I'm going to use my overlays and be able to like run a tight loop on that and check those dependencies into my repository so that I'm sure that if those remotes ever go down, I'm never gonna lose access to my dependencies, right? Um, so I'm doing some interesting things in here. Like um, there is, you can see that this is like a, a Starlark Python, Pythonic type programming language, except it's embedded in YAML. And um, basically I can start patching in some values and you know tell Dex, like this is the configuration that I wanna build for Dex. Right, so I've got a bunch of config updates, and I actually just want to patch those uh, using this this pretty gnarly functional call right here. This is about the most advanced thing that I've ever done in YTT. Um, this config YAML inside the uh, Dex installation, it's actually an inline string of YAML. Uh, so this is something that you could never dream to do with like customize. Um, and you can do this kind of stuff with Helm, but then you're string templating. So yeah, YTT for me, it's a general Swiss army knife that's kind of filling this happy medium of like, I have a very niche thing where I wanna deserialize a bunch of inline YAML in somebody else's string that I got from the internet through an automated tool. Uh, and I'm just gonna go and uh, take my overlay and start making updates to it. So that's what this file does. Right. So you can see there's a lot of complexity here. And some of these values are about GitHub client IDs and secrets. These are going to be actually loaded in from a secret. Uh, some of it is like Dex options on how to talk to GitHub. And then some of these other things are actually not about Dex at all, right? It's like, I want to expose a client ID, an arbitrary client ID and secret uh, for Dex and the callback for that OAuth application, it should be the Pinniped host, right? So this is like the, the glue nightmare of an infrastructure engineer. And uh, luckily YTT is helping me wrangle that. Um, so that's just the DEX config, right? But then if, if we look at the Pinniped supervisor, which is the other component that is necessary to set up the, the authentication provider that we're going to be using for identity. Um, so we're going to glue the supervisor and DEX together. And um, this has its own mixture of config. So if you look at the client secrets uh, for the OIDC identity provider, um, that kind of is the proper or is the primary thing that configures Pinniped, then we need to also point it to a secret that contains DEX client credentials, you know. And uh, those DEX client credentials, you know, have to be uh, created and I think I'm already, I'm already losing track of the rest of the complexity of all these patches and stuff. Uh, we also have to bolt on some ingress stuff. We have to set up a service because Pinniped doesn't have a default way. Um, it's not like forcing you to expose it in a particular way. You know, you might be using Tailscale or something instead. So um, yeah, we're gonna have to build all of this config and then put it into a place where Flux can find it. So let's go ahead and bootstrap Flux into our cluster. Um, we have a couple of infrastructure bits already working inside of our cluster. I have Kiam deployed. Uh, I chose Kiam over IRSA because I had it required less permissions to, to do. Uh, Kiam is currently in maintenance mode. IRSA is the preferred way to get an identity on an AWS cluster. But uh, this is a self-hosted AWS cluster. I'm running Tanzu Community Edition. Um, so like if I do, you know, Kubernetes version, um, then you might see in the version string right here, uh, v21.2 VMware. Um, and Tanzu Community Edition uh, gives me this um, package install. Um, So you can see I have a couple of things already um, running here. Uh, this is not currently managed by my Flux control repo because I was iterating, uh, but these resources will eventually bubble up into my Flux control repo. Uh, so I have this secure ingress namespace that's managing an external DNS, a contour, and a cert manager uh, install. Uh, these are coming from a OCI registry that holds these packages. 
um, with the Carvel tool suite. And uh, basically, I'm just I'm an important bit is that I'm running the newest version of Contour, uh, and there is uh, external DNS and Cert Manager running, uh, and those are hooked up to do a DNS Acme challenge and update DNS records in a zone called YAML TP. So uh, definitely, I know that this stuff's getting really heavy. So if like I'm ever saying some weird acronyms and that kind of stuff, and it sounds confusing, just totally ask the question and I will get into it. Cool. So we've got a bunch of cool infrastructure that's able to go and make our records, right? So we wanna get this stuff on the cluster. Let's go ahead and uh, follow up. We made that repo in the Stealthy Tail organization, and I'm going to do the Flux Bootstrap now. Right. So I think I, I was starting to write this command out. This is probably pretty close to correct. Flux Bootstrap GitHub. Um, so this is going to go set up the PKI for me, uh, the, S, the SSH keys. Uh, oh, no, actually, I'm going to use token auth. Uh, the reason I'm using token auth is because I have a job in here that should set up a GitHub um, webhook. And then we've got Flux Pinniped. That's the repository name owned by the Stealthy Tail organization on the cluster's MGM TPath. So this should work out pretty good, I think. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Client side throttling. That was throttling talking to Kubernetes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that uh, Smain responded saying, um, thanks for the answer uh, about the, with regard to using EKS and DEX. Uh, sounds like you're using a Jetstack project called Kube OIDC Proxy um in order to have a common auth system yeah so in in the fallback mode for pinniped which is when it doesn't have access to the certificate uh mechanisms the certificate signing requests for things that the api server will actually respect um which is unlikely in a managed cluster but in a kubedam created cluster it's there um so pinniped will either use the certificate auth and then give you a temporary certificate that's only good for that cluster uh, or it will step in and do this sort of OIDC proxy, just like uh, probably what that Jetstack project was doing. Um, I've not used that one, but I do know that the Pinniped's implementation of the uh, authentic authentication proxy is very high quality. So we did our Flux bootstrap here. Uh, looks like you know uh, Flux deployed and it's healthy, so that's good. And I should be able then to uh, do a git pull on this repo as long as I named everything correctly. And I might need to like, I don't know, uh, stealthy tail head. Yikes. Um, main. Apparently, I don't know how to uh, do this. Kind of missing something. Oh, it's because I didn't make an initial commit yet. So this is really lost on what to do. How do I reconcile this? I should have made an initial commit um, before. Now I have to set the upstream, or I have to set the remote, I guess. It is here. And then I can't just get pull. I have to get pulls W tell me. Let me go look at what's happening in GitHub really quick. Sorry, friends, I just got a little bit disoriented. Mm -mm -mm. So we do have this clusters management flux system here, and I just need to make my remote match this, which, why is it not? Um, That looks correct to me, but then the branch, there is no branch. Right. Right. This makes sense. Okay. Um, I think what I can do here is
something like this, but then put it into a temp folder. And then uh, I'm just gonna commit crimes. Um, what was this called? It was, there we go. It will just do this. <laughs> um, and maybe now I haven't messed things up so badly. Um, but that should have the whole history there. And I imagine that my status would be telling me, oh no, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I, I, I want these commits in my history and it's on main. Maybe I should just copy all of my stuff into this repo instead. That would not be too bad, I don't think. Yeah, there's no commits on this branch. Can I? There's... I, I know what I can do. Um, I'll make a temp branch. I will. Oh, it was origin. That was the issue. Okay. Um, okay. I think. Set upstream to origin name. Yeah. And I need to check out name and then do that. And then pull. And check my log. Cool. Here we go. <laughs> I know how to use Git. There we are. Uh, and then we'll just um, we'll just remove that whole directory that I didn't need and um, check our branch list, which should be pretty clean. Perfect. Okay. I have not uh, made anything suck that much. Cool. So we installed Flux. Flux is syncing. Now, if I drop stuff into the um, clusters directory, right, we've got Flux system here. And so then I can look at the sync YAML and I can produce more of these, right? So I usually like to make a new folder in here called like flux system apply, just something that like clearly is the same namespace, but not in the same folder that flux is managing. Uh, and I might then do something like copy this sync and then start telling it to go and, um, and add other folders from my repo, right? So this is syncing the clusters management directory right now. I don't need this Git repository source because I'm in the same namespace. So we will uh, crank this interval down to like five minutes for now. We're having a webhook, so this should work just fine. And then we have a config folder in the root of our repo and this flex system webhook. Um, so I'll just copy, go and sync that in to the cluster. Oh, uh, I need to copy the path and then we'll just take that off. Uh, the git repo is pointed at flex system and then we'll just name 
the um, customization properly. So here we got one thing that's going to be syncing on our management cluster now, right? If we go to clusters management, we can see that this folder is going to, I should probably rename this, yep, to sync the Flux system webhook. And we can follow this uh, pattern to add other resources, right? So let's go ahead and just uh, push that, get our webhook installed. Um, and I will add clusters. And we'll say enable the GitHub webhook. So that way we don't have to like flux sync all the time. And uh, of course, I need to remember how to use Git as well. Come in. There we go. Put in my GPG password and push. Cool. And that should sync to my cluster pretty soon. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about it right now because we got other stuff to figure out, right? So it, I want to start publishing some configuration. Uh, and I was going to do some SOPS encryption here, uh, but I think that we don't have enough time for that. So I will just commit secrets to the Git repository. Um, all of this is being recorded anyway, so I do have to revoke all these secrets that I'm creating. Um, so we'll we'll just push up um, secret stuff to the repo. So what I'm going to do now, we're back in like weird auth land, right? This is not stuff that you can just do in Git. Uh, you have to set up identity providers and things like that. Uh, so we are going to go into our uh, organization settings. And we have to go and make a one of these things. <laughs> you can see that uh, I've, I've already approved a, a development version of Dex. But I need to make a GitHub app or something, something like that. It's in developer settings. Here we are, OAuth apps. So I'm going to register an app here, and we're going to call this uh, the Flux TC in a bad demo about the homepage URL is going to be HTTPS dex.yaml TV. So I'll remember that for, uh, for dex. And we put it as dex, not pinniped, because dex is the thing that's going to talk to GitHub. And then this uh, callback URL over here is going to be basically also that, right? YAML TV slash callback. Um, I never played with this, this enable device flow. I'm not sure if this works with Pinniped. So I'm just, it's not gonna break anything if I check it, but it. I also know that, that it's not necessary for what we're doing. So uh, we're not gonna need to do that. So we're gonna register this app and it's telling me that I have this client ID. So that this is already some important piece of information right here. Uh, and then we're also gonna wanna generate this client secret. Right, so we have the callback URL set up. We have this homepage URL, uh, which is just like a weird required field that's actually no one's ever going to use. And uh, I'm going to put this client's ID into my config for the management cluster. Right. So if uh, I go to config and then I go to my YTT values for the management cluster, you can see I have to configure the GitHub client ID right here. Right. And then um, might as well add like some randomness to this ID as well. And then we got to get this client secret. So this thing we have to generate. We have to generate a client secret. And then it's like, yo, you can have this one time and then I'm never going to show it to you again. So you have to like, you know, go and do that. Um, and then I'll paste the client secret here in. So it's at this point where if we're like in production, you don't, you don't want to do what I'm going to do right now, which is I'm going to, I'm going to commit this values file unencrypted to get and I'm also going to use this values file to build other manifests that are also going to be unencrypted. But um, if we were to spend a little bit more time in the future, uh, I have this encryption key right here. Uh, it's an age encryption key. And then I have SOPS configured to do that. And I can just 
put something in my make file or I can run it in my CI or it probably just would be in your make file um, for this like get secret setup. And this would go and encrypt all of our secret fields, you know? So that's kind of the thought there, uh, but we don't have time for that right now. So um, I've configured those things. I have all of these other things. So uh, cluster audience, this is for the Pinniped concierge. This is what's gonna let us log in to our management cluster. Um, and the concierge is the component that you deploy on all of the, all of the clusters that you have that want to be able to authenticate. So there's three components. There's DEX, there's the Pinniped supervisor, and that's like your control plane, right? You install those things once in some important place. And that important place has like restricted access. And, you know, like you protect that thing because it is kind of the arbiter of identity for your entire Kubernetes platform. And then you can install the third component, the concierge everywhere, including your management cluster, if you want to be able to log into your management cluster that way. So um, that's, that's what that field is for. And you can see that this is different uh, when I go to my workload values, right? So I just, I found some random numbers and put them in there. And, uh, and then this is all you need to know to set up your other clusters is you just have this. So uh, that's your pin bed host and your ID for, to make the cluster unique. So we have our values configured here. We have our, our uh, client ID generated and our secret generated. So that's pretty dope. And um, so now we've got to do this YTT build and we can put that build into uh, a couple folders that will reconcile in the management cluster. So I guess I can put them in here. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. So I want to do a YTT build of the, let's see, we need the Carvel YTT library for all of this stuff. So that will be this whole thing, yeah. It'll work. And then we want some of these overlays we might have to separate. Just, I won't include this or this. We can put those in some separate folders, but then I want to overlay the DEX stuff. And then if we do this build, we need to include our special values from the config for our management stuff. And it looks like I'm missing something. Document on line of two. Cool. Apparently I like made a typo, I think. Key cluster audience, expected number of match nodes to be one, but with zero. That's weird. That's like kind of an important field. Um, is that because, oh, that's because, um, that's because I'm not including the uh, concierge. I want to have the overlay for the concierge in here as well. Did I not add this in my, um, now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't actually test configuring this. This should be in here, cluster audience. And then the schema cluster audience. I don't know, that looks right to me. Mm. 
And this, uh, this cluster audience field is part of that implementation that keeps the cryptography uh, in between the clusters unique. Um, so that's why there's all of these knobs. Uh, that's bizarre. It's almost like I'm using the wrong type or something. Unfortunately, this is not the best error message. Do, do. So it's like if I take out the values, it doesn't build. Oh, okay. So the problem is with the template. If I just try to build this overlay, it should only. Sorry, we need to make sure that this works. Why does this fail? Cluster audience match nodes to be one, but with zero. That's interesting that it builds on its own, but it doesn't build when I add decks and the other stuff. What about just this? That does work. Is there something in decks that's using this? I just split up all of this config. And it's almost like it's telling me that Dex needs the cluster audience, which wouldn't make any sense to me. Do, do, do. I need it here. Values. Yeah, it's just a bunch of values and then just that's the only place there. And it looks like I'm supplying it the same way in every place. Hmm. This is a little bit odd. I wasn't expecting this to be a problem at all. And it's like one of those rough edges when you're using this uh, nested like overlay tooling. Um, how do I get this to work? Okay, let's focus on getting the Pinniped um, supervisor installed first because I do need to split that up anyway. So we will only build let us go and on the config for the management cluster, I am going to attempt to build with this. We were only trying to build the DEX overlay and then have the Pinniped concierge. Oh, I understand now what I did. That was dumb. Sorry, friends. I made a, a silly mistake here. Um, expected. And then this is a values file. It's not. I, I was telling um, YTT to build the um, to build my values file, which is not what we want. We need to set the data value file and then pass our config. There we go. I was very confused there. Um, we should definitely put a. It's not a file, it's a YAML or something. No, this should work. What if I just comment it out? Pretty stuck on this demo until I uh, get this to work. So sorry for the very painful um, templating and error messages here. 
Uh, non YTT comment. Yeah, that's not a big deal. I can get rid of that. Cool. There we go. All right, we'll take this build. Um, that this is a build of all of the infrastructure necessary to deploy Pinniped and Dex without it being configured. And we want to write this to a directory that is being synchronized to our Kubernetes cluster. Um, so I am going to put this in the um, clusters management directory. And uh, we will just call this the YTT build um, auth infra. And that is a YAML file that Flux will know to synchronize. Cool. Um, so if we get add our clusters folder, we see that there's a new file. We want to push that up. Um, and then we can go and uh, Flux get customizations and Flux system. Did I accidentally paste something here? Applied revision main, config, flux system webhook. Actually, that's that's wrong. So I should go and fix that too. Close all of these overlays and stuff and go and look at this apply folder. We got, that's wrong right there. So my webhook wasn't installed properly. Thanks for the good error message flux. We'll go um, add the clusters folder again, commit, fix the webhook and spell properly. I don't trust it. Cool. All right. Push that up. Um, and then uh, flux reconcile customization, um, flux system. And then uh, with source. Cool. I wonder why my API server is doing so much throttling. Also, my TTY is kind of messed up here. Um, Failed to create type patch annotations field not declared in the schema. Did I? Oh, this TTI uh, messed up. Hey, Lee, just wanted to come on and do a time check. Yeah, yeah, I should. Definitely wrap this up, shouldn't I, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it, this demo is just so full of information. And uh, let's see. So we had an issue with um, the build output from my YTT program. So I'm, I'm creating invalid YAML because I made some edits to the uh, DEX ingress. And if I... So I'm looking at the build output right now. This is one of the benefits of committing the build output to your um, to your repository. So I can see here that the annotations was not indented properly. Uh, I'm just going to fix that right now. Let's do a git push. Um, fix indent manually without YTT. Cool. And uh, I needed to add that. Cool. And 
and then we can do our reconcile uh, with source. And this will get Pinniped and Dex installed into the cluster unconfigured. So uh, that'll be a good stopping point for the demo. And we can talk about kind of what the whole experience of this is. Unfortunately, my, uh, my GitOps game was lacking precision a little bit today. Sorry, friends. Uh, waiting for me to not be throttled here. And there we go. So now our revisions have reconciled properly. And if we look at the namespaces, uh, there should be a Pinniped supervisor namespace and a concierge namespace, as well as Dex. Right. So there's a little example of using YTT to install the three components that are necessary uh, to run this sort of authentication structure. Right. So now that we have this, right, we would uh, do a similar YTT build um, that basically you get rid of this library part and we just need to do the overlays that are necessary to configure the thing. Uh, so that would be the Pinniped uh, supervisor and the um, overlay for the Pinniped concierge. Right. And if we were doing this properly as well, we would add um, a dependency here, but just to like, um, basically instead of the infra, this is the auth config, right? Um, and then we're having that issue because I needed to separate this out into a separate values file. So that'll be for a improved version of this demo. And we will overwrite that file with the build. Nah, still not working. Oh, well, friends. Um, I don't see a good way to move beyond this for the moment because the concierge is not building. So we will, um, we will table that for another day. And let me talk us out of this situation. Cool. So basically, should our, uh, should our config build have been less error uh, prone? And that, this is really just because I was prepared too late. So uh, that's, that's my bad. Um, but basically the vision here is that you get the supervisor and Dex installed into your management cluster, right? And then any other cluster you spin up, it can be a workload cluster that's created by Cappy, it can be a kind cluster. It can be an EKS cluster that you made with EKS Cuddle. You just go and you install the concierge on it. And then what can you do? So if I like kind of hop over to my really messy nodes, the it's either in this. Basically, you can start binding. Uh, to the groups that you made in GitHub Teams, you can bind to that using role bindings in Kubernetes, right? And you can say, hey, when somebody logs in with this group, right? I don't even need to know who they are. I don't, need, I don't need to know what their email is or what their username is. Um, that, I just realized that I put, I put this up on the screen, here we go. That, so, you can role bind against these groups. You can say, hey, this group has admin access using the cluster role uh, inside of just only the default namespace, right? And then they're able to go and create applications and debug and change things. And you're like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want people changing things in my Kubernetes cluster. We're doing GitOps. Well, you know, like you can talk with your team about that. Um, if you want all debug stuff to go through the GitOps control loop, I support it. I think it's a good thing to do. So instead of giving somebody admin access, right, from the kube admin group, maybe you would still give the kube admins read access, right? Like you give them viewer. And maybe you could even give everyone viewer because I mean, like, who cares if somebody can look at what the state of something is inside of the Kubernetes cluster, as long as they don't have access to the secrets, right? If you're encrypting everything, if it's going through the funnel and your, your network security is, is um, like on lock, you know, where people are like, aren't actually inside of the compute, execing into pods and doing dangerous things, 
then somebody should be able to ask for information from the Kubernetes API safely, right? You could give people viewer and like, that's gonna give them a better debugging experience than just like trying to figure out why Flux is yelling at them inside of Slack, right? And the big idea here is that you can tie all of these role bindings to declarative, um, declarative objects that you store in Git, you collaborate on them, they're done with pull request, they tie to identities that are in Git. You're managing your Git uh, teams probably with like Terraform or some other controller. Uh, so the whole kind of organization is codified in the way that you allow people to work with each other and the way that you enable people to collaborate with each other. Uh, I even wrote another note over here uh, as I was kind of building up this readme, which is that SOPS is even adding support uh, for age, SSH, encryption, and decryption. Uh, and that would be able to use your personal SSH keys. So you could even have a controller that's like running inside the cluster that updates the Git repo um, so that all of your SOPs encrypted secrets can be accessed by people from a particular GitHub team. Like you're able to access that uh, by looking up the member list and then like check checking out the user's SSH keys and then using all of those SSH keys as a valid encryptor and decryptor for particular secrets in the repo. And so you could even get to the point where people don't even have the cluster decryption key, they use their own SSH key and that gets revoked and the secrets get rotated, you know, when you have to remove them from the repository when they move on to their next job, right? So there's all sorts of really cool things that we can do around the operations of the Git repository when it comes to tying together the cluster to GitHub with that OAuth app. And the way that we can do that is by hooking up DEX to GitHub with the OAuth app and then installing Pinniped and building a topology of Pinnipeds with the supervisor and a bunch of concierges all across your Kubernetes fleet because we're in a multi-cluster world now. You got that multi and then all, all your developers need to do is they got the Pinniped CLI and they just do Pinniped login. It opens up their browser and they're like, hey, you know, just go click the screen button on GitHub and you've got access to Kubernetes, the right access that has been given by the RBAC ACLs inside of the Git repo. So that would, that's the big idea. Uh, and I will be fine tuning this demo so that you can enjoy uh, it at a future date. So. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we are 10 minutes over, so I will wrap things up. But I think, Lee, the only other thing I wanted to um, ask is, are you your stealthy box pretty much everywhere across like um, all the Slack channels? Is that correct? Sometimes yeah, you're yeah. feeling. On, on I think. Slack, I'm pretty much stealthy box everywhere. Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah, if you have yeah. any questions or want to reach out to Lee, you can find him on uh, all the Slacks everywhere. Stealthy box. Thanks yeah, so much. Kubernetes Slack, uh, CNCF Slack, and the Flux channel. Thingy. Yeah. Let's Fantastic. Talk, uh, let's talk authentication and get ops. <laughs> awesome. Well, maybe we'll have you back for another session uh, soon. Otherwise, see you in, I mean, I won't see you there, but I'm sure most folks will see you in at KubeCon Valencia. Uh, I yeah. I won't see you in Valencia. No, I'm not going to yeah, be there. Yeah, I'm thinking I will likely be there, so. Sweet. Nice. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much for, for sitting through everything. <laughs> <laughs>